Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of I Hate Selling Live. It's me, Ryan McKenzie. I'm right here with you. Excited for today, guys. We've got a, a really, really cool topic. We're talking about how to know if your website is good enough. How to know if your website, your web presence is enough for your gym, is enough for your role as a personal trainer or for your personal trainers at your gym, how to know if it's losing you money, how to know if it should be better and how to make it better for less. Um, that's a pretty cool idea for me. I've got brought Brad Smith in here from Automation Links. He actually does my website. If you want to check out a little bit of his work, he set me up and um, you can grab my book on there. I hate selling book.com. I hate selling book.com. Super easy to set up, super easy to adjust. If I want to adjust something on the fly, it's awesome. But right now, I'm going to have Brad talk to you guys. Guys, welcome, Brad. Brad, you're the man. Thank Thanks you. for having me, Mr. Ryan. And I like to say, does your website suck? Because usually it does. <laughs> <laughs> mine? Mine doesn't. No, but you out there, does your website suck? Yeah, that's yeah. the question. And either the answer is yes, it sucks, just it looks bad. Or yes, it sucks. I don't know how to edit it. I can't do anything. I got to call somebody. Um, right now, yep. Brad takes care of me and he can edit it however I ask him to, or I can jump in on a quick fly and do anything that I want to do to it without fear of screwing the whole thing up, which I think Ooh. is a rare thing to have. We know you would screw it up too. I would. I would really <laughs> bad. Uh, before we get to all of this, most importantly, um, we've got some questions. I'm going to let Brad think about these for a second. We need to know his favorite cereal and we need to know something weird about him if you've been following the podcast at all. Those are the two questions I asked to start us off. Um, if you are in the I Hate Selling Live Facebook group, you're watching this live right now. Thanks for being here with me. If you're not in the I Hate Selling Live Facebook group, what are you doing with your life? Why are you waiting a week for this podcast to come out on Apple Podcasts when you could be here with us talking to us live right here? You're watching on YouTube or something else or on, on the podcast channels. You could be right here talking to me and Brad live right now, asking questions, getting them answered. We have a little fun afterwards after we cut, cut things off. So Join us in the group I Hate Selling Live for the Fitness Professional on Facebook. Check That's it out. That's a pretty right. cool group. I like that group. Fun group. Uh, Brad. Good conversations. Good question for you here. Most important question. Uh, what's your favorite cereal, sir? Yeah, so I don't eat cereal anymore. I guess I have to be on a diet or something. <laughs> but uh, I, my favorite was uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. All that sugar is perfect. That's right. Yep. Cinnamon More toast sugar, the better in cereal. Right now, I'm tallying up Cinnamon Toast Crunch is by far and away the number one answer. Uh, a close second has been uh, Lucky Charms. Mm -hmm. Some people try to get healthy with theirs, but you know, those are the two right now that are that are up there. All it's right. not cereal unless there's a ton of sugar in it. <laughs> what is one strange or odd thing about you, sir, that not many other people know about? What's something weird that you do? Oh, man. I, I'm Well, just off the top of my head was um, at this point, I came from a fitness background um, I did so much fitness in my life that I actually hate working out now. <laughs> and nobody knows that. People think I like it, but I'm so burnt out that I hate it. I'm sick of it. <laughs> so you're saying you need a trainer, right? You need someone need to motivate trainer. you? Yep. All right, I think I might know some trainers in this group or listen to this podcast. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you know uh, of a good trainer, reach out to Brad. Um, if you're a great online trainer, maybe you could figure out a way to motivate him to get going. Yeah, because um, I'm sick of it. <laughs> you got to get doing it every every day since I was like 10 years old. So I'm like, I need a break. Yeah. Rest, rest days are important. I would say that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty big. So, um, Brad, I brought you on here to talk about websites. I know we're going to keep this brief and to the point so people can get to what they need and what they need to change. So on one angle, we want to talk about, obviously, um, if you've got, if you've, if you've got a website and a company managing it for you, what should be done. But on the other side, if it's just me, I'm by myself and I've got a website, like, what can I do? Right. So if we could talk to both those angles, we've got owners yeah. in the group and we've got personal trainers in the group. Cool. We've got some people that are just starting their website and some people that have like had the same thing forever. So if I'm a trainer, if I'm a gym owner, how do I know if my website is any good or not? Like, what do I need to know about that? And also a lot of people, one thing to add is there are a lot of people out there that think they don't need a website because they have their Facebook or Instagram page. Mm -hmm. So that would be a third group, I would say. So who are you guys? If you're listening to this live or if you're on YouTube or anything that allows you to comment and respond back here, I want to talk to you. Do you have a website? Say website or no website, throw it in the comments. And then where are you on that list? Do you hate it or do you love it? I want to hear from you. We want to know. Or do right. you even think you need one? Do so you think, I could... Yeah, I don't think I need one. 
tell us, fight with us, let's do it. I get a lot. So here's a really good stat for you. The average website gets a 0.001% sign up rate. 0.001%. So out of, I think it is um, pretty sure. And if I've even asked a mathematician on this, out of every thousand visitors, you may get one sign up. That doesn't sound very good, Brad. Now, if you if you had a thousand people come into your gym, how many of those people are you gonna sign up? 80%, 800 yeah, of them? A lot of them, if they're in person, they come in, I'm gonna get a lot, but now a lot of places aren't open. We don't have a lot of people wanting to just come in that they, when they don't already know us. Yeah. Um, so the website has become more important, especially with Facebook and everything else and Instagram, like they get to decide who sees what in a lot of ways, whether, unless you pay them. And sometimes even if you pay them. Um, so how, exactly. so that would be one. Um, think about how many signups you actually get from your site. If you don't get that many. You're probably on that 0.001%. So we got to figure out how to increase that percentage, right? It shouldn't be hard, right? At zero, it's not that hard. 0.001%. You think you'd be able to increase a little bit. <laughs> I mean, just to get it to 1%, that's 10 out of a thousand, I think. So there we go. My numbers are probably way off. That's Nobody great. hate yeah. on the numbers. Go so. for it. All right. Uh, second I mean, thing is listening right now. Nobody, nobody does math here. We count to 10. We count to 12. We do three we rounds. Go. We're great. <laughs> you know, we don't need to worry about the math. Yeah. 1% of a thousand is 10. All right. If anyone, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. <laughs> um, next thing you had your family, your friend, your brother, your sister, your aunt and uncle, your client do your website for you. It's just sitting there and it's doing nothing for you. You don't know, even know how to log in. That's the second scenario I see. Yeah, I've seen that. I've been there. Yeah. Okay. So you may have done a trade. I hear a lot of trainers do trades with their clients. Um, somebody, oh, I know how to do a website. You do a trade, you train them for that month or two, and you get a website that you don't even know how to log into and that gives you zero leads. And then you're stuck training this person forever for free if you want them to actually like do update anything. your site and you got to give your, yep, yeah, okay. Okay, then the third is I don't need a website. I've got my Facebook page. How many clients are actually paying you through your Facebook page? Think about that for a second or on your Instagram page. Can someone go to your Facebook and Instagram page and actually sign up and pay you for training sessions? Probably Give not. Money or schedule themselves. Hmm. Or even schedule themselves. Uh, is it an actual brand if you don't have a website? So people will be able, they'll be able to see and trust you as a brand if you really want to grow. Maybe if you're a single trainer and you want to work with five clients, stick with your Instagram page. If you really want to grow a business, you've got to have a brand. You have to have to have a company uh, that people can go sign up and schedule. They can sign up and pay. They can actually see that you're real, that they can trust you, et cetera. That's good. That's good. So what's my, what's my big tell? Like my first step of saying, I want to make sure this website's worth it. I want to make sure like investing in a website or having a, like, how do I know if I'm ready to have that? And how do I know if it's good or not? Right. Cause we know there's all these bad scenarios, but when do I take that leap or that jump to get one? And how do I know if I've done a good thing or not? Yep, exactly. So I think uh, first thing is you need to know if you're ready to actually grow a business. So a lot of people are scared to grow a business or don't know how to grow a business. Do you want to grow? Do you want to get more clients? Everybody can say, I want new leads, or are you going to take those right steps to actually get those new leads? Or are you just going to keep doing what you're doing? So are you actually ready to grow? If you are, um, there's website builders out there you can start with. Um, there's, you know, like Wix is probably the worst one, but you can still get started with that. There's ClickFunnels, there's Squarespace. Uh, you can even get a really low cost one page website from us just to get you started and get uh, building your domain. So you got to get started. That's the first step. You then have to have a, uh, something that's easy to edit. So WordPress is one of the most popular ones out there but it's one of the hardest ones to edit. You can go mm -hmm. sign up for a free WordPress account, free, but you're, you're not investing in something that will help you grow because you'll never learn, or should you have to learn um, technical and coding skills on WordPress. Right. Yeah, you're uh, a personal trainer. You need to get better at training your people, getting results and selling and getting referrals, not coding, right? Not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <big. laughs> Yep. Or you're a business owner and you get better at training your people, leading your people, getting a return on your investment, not coding. You know, that's, that's, I think it's a big deal. So people yeah. gravitate toward Wix or ClickFunnels. What's the downside of those? Cause I used to have a ClickFunnels account and I switched over. Um, why did I do that? 
tell me. I don't know why. That's awesome. <laughs> well, first of all, you're not the expert at building the site. So you tried setting it up. It looked good. You did a good job with it, right? But you weren't getting ranked on Google. A lot of those won't get you ranked on Google. I think specifically talking about me, yes. Like I, it looked okay. It was a template. I filled in the colors kind of looked a little wonky, but I was yeah. not ranked on Google. I had no natural leads coming in at all. Right. Yeah. So exactly. if you want to use me as an example for this, then by all means, go tell, tell them how bad I was. Perfect. I'm right yeah. where people were. Yeah. I mean, you had the sales page, but you're n you really weren't getting any traffic to it for those people no. to sign up. Um, and we're going to go over th my three key points for the website. Um, right. You didn't have those three key points in there either. Um, it was all about Ryan. There was no relationship builders. And you had one good call to action. You had your free book, which I love. Right. So uh, one of the biggest things for me, I had a fitness and nutrition business um, and I was number one on Google. So you are not a Google specialist. You're not a website specialist. You need to maybe invest in yourself or your business. And if you're ranking on Google in your local area for whatever services you offer, your business will just explode without ever having to pay for ads. So that is a, a one thing. If you try to do it on your own with one of these website builders, you're gonna miss out on things like that, getting ranked on Google. Um, having the key tips in there to get the more clients. That's big. So you're saying you can get leads in without paying for ads because people see you when they're searching for things, not just when they stumble across you and get interrupted in their laziness on Instagram or Facebook, right? Because if yeah. you're like me, my wife and I get on Instagram or Facebook when we had nothing else to do, which is a rare time, we're just kind of, oh, look what they said. Oh, look what he said. Oh, that makes me angry. Oh, that makes me happy. Oh, that made me laugh. Oh, here's a neat article. I'm not looking to buy something in that moment. Not that I don't, not that people don't, but I'm not, it's yeah, not what I'm yeah, looking yeah. for. So it's gotta be good. It's gotta be catching to get me to pull away from my laziness to get to your site, right? That's, that's exactly. kind of my thought on it. I would I'm go bad. to in Instagram and say personal trainer near me but I would go to Google and type in personal trainer near me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, now people have great results um, just to summarize that on Facebook and Instagram ads. Right. But guess what? They're not sending it to people that haven't already searched for personal trainer near me. They're retargeting them. They already know that that person said, I want a personal trainer near me in Google. And then guess what? The next day they see that personal trainer on a Facebook ad. So trying to do that on your own is, next to impossible too. Oh, I'm going to go do this Facebook ad. And oh, I just spent a thousand dollars on these Facebook ads and got zero signups. Well, you weren't doing it right. You weren't retargeting people that already look for your service. So there's yeah. so many things in there um, that, you know, you may be missing out on if you're trying to do it all on your own, which, hey, try to do it on your own, get as far as you can. And then when you hit that limit, then hire a team to take over for you. Cool. That's good. I like that. That's a great start. So then that's how we get started and how to ramp, ramp it up. Like talk to us about how we know if it's good or not. You said you had three, three main things. Yep. So three things we'll start. Number one is you have to have one relationship builder on your site, which I'll dive into. You've got to have your copywriting, right? Most websites are all about you and yourself and your business and not about your client's pain points. And number three, an easy call to action. Yeah. You may have a call to action, but what if your customers don't want to take that call to action and they never want to follow through with it? So I'll dive, I'll go back. Number one, Perfect. relationship builder. What is so, a relationship builder? Yeah, talk us through that. Ryan, how can I shake your hand through the computer? Like I said, if somebody comes into your gym, most likely 80% of the time, they're going to sign up and pay you because you have a face-to-face -face relationship. Right. So how can you do that through your website? And there's different ways. Best way is have a video of yourself welcoming them. Hey, my name's uh, Ryan with, you know, training with Ryan. Nice to meet you. Thank you for visiting my website. You would say, thank you for coming into my gym if they walked into your gym. So why don't you say, thank you for coming to my website, right? It's the exact same thing. And what are you here for? If someone came in, you're going to ask them what they're looking for. Weight loss, um, workouts, muscle building. So why don't you say that in your video? Hey, if you're looking for weight loss, muscle building, or, um, how to make more sales with personal training. I've got a great book for you. So you want to actually call out those things and talk to them like they just walked into your business. That's good. I like it. Yep. And then guess what? This is what you should do next because same thing. If someone walked in your business, 
you asked him, you said, thank you for coming in. Um, are you looking for this, this, or this weight loss? Are you interested in classes or one-on-one, one-on-one? This is how you should get started. This is how we'll get started. Well, guess what? If you, you can say that in your video, click the button below. This is how we're going to get started. You're building out a path for them to follow on the website. Like rather than just throwing everything up, it's just like a clear cut. Once they, once they decide what, what they're there for, it pulls them right into the, everything you want, you want them to see, right? Like it's that, yeah. is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, more of so having a video is going to help you build a better relationship with them. Okay. Talking to exactly to them, like you would face to face, which is the goal. Now they're going to say, wow, Ryan just said that he offers weight loss and he wants to know if I'm interested in classes or one-on-one. And he told me where to go next that I feel like I know Ryan already. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. So relationship builders, number one, that's big. Yeah. Uh, you can have, pick, uh, if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable on videos, um, try to do it. It's very helpful. Have a picture of your facility, have a, images of what they can expect, have a picture of you and your family, anything that yeah. you can build a better relationship with is key. Yeah. I've even seen just pictures of your clients as well. Like you can have people enjoying what you do all of a sudden makes me feel like I like what you do more, you know? So that, that, that is, that's huge too. I think we, we get into stock photos. We get into, um, nobody cares all kinds <laughs> of like pictures of myself. We get like, that's, that's maybe it looks nice, but like, really you find that everywhere. Like I want to, if I'm going to go somewhere and work out with somebody and not just download a, a template online, yeah. I want to, I want a real person I'm talking to. I want to know that they're the expert that they actually care about me. So I think it goes back to my sales process. Step one, do they know that I care? So step one on the website is, do they know that I care? I, relationship is key. That's important to me. I need to show them that I care, not just say, I care about you, buy my stuff, you know, but like really show it on your page. Exactly. All right. Number two, copyright. Well, uh, majority of websites out there are all about your information. We're hmm. open at 6 a.m. We close at 10. We have childcare and guess what? We have a gym and guess what? We have a treadmill. That's all about you, making it all about you. And this is my long bio that nobody cares about, um, how <laughs> awesome you are. So majority of businesses are informational based when right. it really needs to be about your customer's pain points. Right. So the very first thing you could say to somebody when they come to your website, are you looking to lose weight? You're in the right place. That's about them. Oh yeah, I am looking to lose weight. I guess I'm in the right place. Instead of we offer weight loss for, you know, that's great. Everyone offers weight loss, every gym. And I'm just using these as examples, sure, sure. but pain points are for any business. What are, choose three pain points your customers may be experiencing and make it all about them instead of all about you. That's good. I went, my wife and I were on a date last night and we went to a store. We we're just walking by down the street and the, uh, on, on the door, it had what they say it's brick and mortar place. Right. So I'm, I'm relating back to the website a little bit here in a minute, but like brick and mortar place, what they sell, all this different stuff. And it was all just a hodgepodge of all kinds of different things. Right. But then the times on the door were like Monday, 10 AM to four ish, four ish, Tuesday, four -ish. nine to two ish, Wednesday, seven to three. -ish. It was like ish. So I, <laughs> what, what is this place? That's, <laughs> that's hilarious. Was, and I think that's a lot of websites feel that way where you, you get there and you're like, okay, I see that it's Ryan's website, but what does he do? You know, yeah. I see that it's, when, how do they help me? And there, it's very, yep. just, oh, there's not, there's nothing specific about it. They don't understand my pain point or what I need. Whereas yeah. if they had on that same, uh, same store, if they had something on the wall, like, do you need help with blah? And I could say yes or no, I'm coming in. You know, that's, that's huge. Yeah. All we, all we see is all trying, uh, Ryan's bodybuilding, uh, trophies. <laughs> I got past. done. Nobody got, cares about those. It's just a blank page. It's just a blank page. <laughs> yep. That was awesome. Cool. Uh, number three is an easy call to action. So um, you have to think about who your customers are, what makes them happy, what makes them comfortable, what kind of communication they like the most. Right. So if I just came to the site and it said schedule a, call, a free call, what am I scheduling a call for? What's going to, what are we going to go over on the call? What why do we need to talk on the phone first? What if I just have one or two questions before I schedule a call? <laughs> Free call means let me try to sell you something, right? That's what it, that's yep. usually what it means. If it's exactly. just that, if there's no context to it, if it's just a no, who's clicking that? I don't know who you are, you know? 
Yep. Um, another thing I see a lot is no call to actions. So just contact page. Well, I go to the contact page and I've got this big, fo this form, name, email, phone, and a big blank box for my message. I'm the customer. I have no idea what I should put in that message. What am I messaging you? Right. Um, hi, Ryan, uh, email me back, <laughs> right? So there's no clear call to action there. It's not easy for me. You're making me think about it. I don't know what to say to you. I don't know right. what to ask. You've got to make it easy for them to get in touch, to give you their contact info. That's big. So seven to 15% increase in signups. So remember I said the average websites get 0.00. So I can get all the way up to 15.001% signups. 15%, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. You can actually, you can grow that by having little things like a multiple choice form instead of a normal contact form. That's good. So you're asking, you're giving them multiple choice answers. All they have to do is check mark. They don't have to type anything out because they don't know what to type out. But guess what? Those multiple choice forms are asking what their pain points are, what they're looking for, how they want to be communicated. Do you want us to email you, call you, or schedule with you? Um, yeah. Are you interested in in person or online? You're asking it about them. You're going to get much higher signups with an easy form about them instead of just a normal contact form. Yeah, and you're going to get more information about them. So when you actually do start texting, emailing, calling them, you can actually know what angle to pursue in the sales process. It almost, it doesn't take the place, a good website, but it, it does start you on the right path of showing them that they care. You're kind of touching into their ouch, where's the pain? If you're following the, the uh, I hate selling format here, this can give you all the information you need as you're going into that sales call, sales um, in-person talk or whatever it is that you start doing, texting, emailing back and forth to close that deal. The website can give you so much that you wouldn't have had if they just send you a message on Facebook. Hey, I'm interested. Yep. Wow, that's good. It's pretty cool. So, um, you know, just the power of this is I was able to start, grow, and sell my fitness business. I was number one on Google, six to 10 new customers a week. I'd be training my clients, working with my clients, getting text messages of new leads and clients interested in signing up. So you're not no saying ads. no, no, not paying for ads at all, not running Facebook posts at all on that, but six to 10 new leads or new clients. What are you oh, saying? Signing up 90%. So we can say five to nine new clients a week. Yep. Wow. That's cool. Interested, ready to sign up because they had a video. Hey, I just watched the video on your website in a text. I'm ready to sign up because I made it easy for them to text me from the site. Wow. So. That's big time. Yep. Cool, man. Um, so run those through again. Relationship piece. Relationship builder. Images of, your, of you working with your clients. Right. Images of your facility. Images of you and your family. Most important, a video. Sure. Man, that's good. Cop copywriting. Make it about the customer's pain points, mm -hmm. not a bunch of info about you. Nobody cares. <laughs> Copywriting. And then your last thing is an easy call to action to get them to, to click on or schedule like something that benefits them, right? Something that's it's connected to them. That's huge. Mul multiple choice form. All they have to do is check, 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 submit. Man, that's awesome. So yeah. there's a ton of other things like how do we link this to my Facebook page? How do I run ads to my website? How do I get people there in the first place? How do I get ranked on Google? All kinds of stuff like that. But I think this is like the great starting point. Um, and Brad's been work honestly working with my website. It got, I don't know how high up it got ranked on Google. I don't check those. You guys check them for me, but I've been getting people downloading my book every day because I have a decent website builder. It might not be like I mess with it and stuff. So it might not be the prettiest thing ever. If you go look at it and be like, well, Ryan, I could make one that looks so much cleaner than this and so much nicer than this. I don't care, guys. I don't care what it looks like. I care that people get the book and can change their business with the content they get, right? So get over this idea that you need some fancy, like crazy website and let's get to something that's actionable and something that's real and something that shows people that you care. That's what matters the most. Brad, anything you want to close off here with and let them know what they need? Yep. Make it all about your clients and you'll be successful. Start building the brand. Um, everyone's going online now. So sooner the, or later, this is of course what we do. Um, if you're not ready to invest in yourself and your business yet, try doing it on your own for a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, when you're ready, you know, bring a company on that says that they have a team. Um, don't bring on your brother, sister, aunt, uncle that is just a single person. 
Yeah. They won't be able to keep up with you. You need to reach out to somebody that has um, employees and a team that will yeah. be your team, be on your side, and that will fix things or help you grow things as you grow. Yeah. So I was talking to Brad earlier, something he said that his team is willing to do. If you guys want to do it, I would highly recommend this. If you think you're at that stage where I'm ready to grow, um, he'll do a website audit with you to kind of just pull up your website, check it out and tell you, Hey, Ryan, this sucks. You need to change it. Or, Hey, this is great. I wouldn't change a thing. Or just kind of go through and find out what is good. What is bad? What, what could you tweak to make it a little better? Um, that's incredibly valuable. So he's willing, anybody that's watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, especially if you're in the group right now, just throw a comment up and he'll, he'll get to you. But yeah, you, usually we find three things that can help you increase leads right away. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So how do they get to that? If they're not in the Facebook group live with us right now, what do they need to do to, uh, to get to you? So our, our company automation links, L I N K S automationlinks.com forward slash start. And you can go right on my scheduler and schedule a call. Guess what? There's a video, a multiple choice form and a scheduler. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Yep. Check it out. Sounds pretty good. I love it. Guys, thanks so much for being here with us. Brad, you're the man. And uh, we're, we're good to go, guys. Train smart, live well. See ya.